Monaco, Le Mans, 24 hour, the Indy 500, the Daytona 500, all great races. The best in motorsport, many would say. You know what also deserves a place on that list? The Bathurst 1000, aka the Aussie Great Race, aka Bogan Christmas. Hi there, and welcome back or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. My name is Amy and I have a somewhat unhealthy obsession with motorsport in general. In today's video, we are talking about one of my favourite races in the entire year. It is the Bathurst 1000. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Bathurst, it is a race on the Supercast calendar. Perhaps it's most well known, the crown jewel of Australian motorsport, if you will. I am convinced you why you should watch it this weekend. If you're unsure as to what Supercars is, um, it's an Australian Touring Car Championship. Um, I have a whole other video about what it is, I will link it somewhere up there. It and F1 are like the two championships that I tune into every week, so they're pretty good. They are pretty good. Now, in terms of the Bathurst 1000, it has actually been running since 1963, which is a lot longer than I thought. Since it relocated from the Phillip Island circuit, it has been part of the Supercars calendar since 1999 and since then has held more than a few pretty, pretty hardcore insane races. The race consists of 161 laps of the Mount Panorama circuit in Bathurst. This amounts to 1000 kilometers, obviously. With the races taking about six to seven hours to complete, so you know, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a long day, but it's worth it. 2022 was no exception to the whole craziness of Bathurst, with the race being held in subpar conditions and the top 10 shootout being canceled. It was a chaotic event with a number of yellow flags and safety cars on the opening laps of the race. However, it is the Kiwi that you all know and love, Shane Rangers Bergen, who was able to take the win at the end of the day. Marking Holden's last Bathurst win before obviously they switched to Chevy's this year. So let's go over some highlights of the track that you might want to keep in mind as you were watching. Um, there are many in my opinion. This is Australia's by like by far the greatest circuit we have in the country, Albert Park. <laughs> we don't talk about her. Sandown, pretty good, but Bathurst, it takes it takes the cake. Now, there are quite a few reasons for that, and let's start with the highlights. Mount Panorama is not for the faint-hearted. It is part permanent facility, part street track. It features 23 corners and two straights with an elevation change of 174 meters. As cars race up and down the mountain, reaching speeds of 300 kilometers an hour. Some of my favorite parts of the track include mountain straight, the first straight on the track just after the first turn, otherwise known as Hell's Corner for obvious reasons. This straight sees the cars hit 250 kilometers an hour and become airborne briefly. Then there's the cutting, a part of the track that is literally cut into the side of the mountain. Barely any room for errors or overtaking. Of course, that has never stopped anyone from trying. After this, you reach the top of the mountain, where Supercar's finest fans can be seen camping, watching cars, and getting absolutely plastered all weekend. You then move on to Brock's skyline, which provides stunning views before an absolutely terrifying blind right-hander into the drop. This is followed by a series of tight corners, known as the S's, and then you reach the Dipper, which is essentially a bit of a... that seems pretty accurate, it's like... Again, not a lot of room for error, lots of elevation change. More than a few brushes with the wall will occur over the course of the race. And by this point, the drivers are basically on to the second straight, the Conrad straight. This is where they reach 300 kilometers an hour, which all builds up to one of the better overtaking opportunities on the track, the chase, which is a little kink in the road before a simple right-hand corner that leads you back onto pit straight. Pit Street is actually kind of interesting because the race doesn't start and finish at the same point because that would make it just over a thousand kilometers and of course it has to be exactly a thousand kilometers 
So the start and finish lane are actually at different points on pit straight, which is quite cool. They then go along the straight, hit Hell's Corner, rinse and repeat for 161 laps. Now, to add to this, we are in Australia, which of course means we get our fair share of wildlife. Kangaroos and echidnas are basically par for the course during the race. And are just another fun, silly thing for the drivers to worry about, particularly at sunrise and occasionally at sunset. Because yes, this race will see safety cars, it will see yellow flags, potentially red flags too. It, yeah, long ass race, but pretty action packed. On top of all of this, when it comes to endurance races, there is even more added strategy involved. Because not only do the pit crew have to just simply change tires, they don't have to worry about refueling the cars, changing brake pads. All this provides so many different interesting strategies. And this is what I love about most of what I am, the st motorsport strategy geek nerd. It is what I love. F1 manager who? I love, I love strategy, I love the strategy. And one vital thing you should know before you start watching these races is the qualifying format because it is different for Bathurst. So basically, it's pretty standard. Everybody goes out, they set the fastest lap, normal qualifying section. And that's how the orders decided all the way until we hit the top 10. Now the top 10, it is a one lap shootout, which is the most absolutely spectacular, beautiful thing ever. I love one lap shootouts. The fact we don't have them in F1 is a crime against humanity. Yeah, it's where you get to see them on the absolute limits, they don't have to worry about traffic, they don't have to worry about anything. It is insane to watch. Okay, so we know a bit about Bathurst, but what about the current crop of drivers? Well, of course, there's the team that, you know, I love and support. Red Bull Ample Racing, or Triple Eight Racing, or Red Bull Triple Eight Racing, whatever you want to call it. They're all the same team. Now they have three cars. I will go for the main two that are technically competing for the Supercars Championship. You have Mr. Shane Van Gisbergen and what will be his last Bathurst, potentially for a while as he moves across to NASCAR next season. Insane, I'm gonna have to watch NASCAR now. Van Gisbergen is partnered with Richard Stenere, who raced for Aston Martin at Le Mans three times. Next up for Red Bull is Brock Feeney, who is partnered with team boss Jamie Wincup. Jamie is an absolute, like, supercars icon. Um, he won the championship seven times, I believe, in Bathurst three. So he kind of knows what he's doing. Brock Feeney being the permanent driver and Jamie being the co-driver. Because for the Endurance Cup, they have to bring in co-drivers. Obviously, that makes sense. Like, they're not going to drive a thousand kilometers just by themselves. Now, this little duo actually won our last endurance race a couple of weeks ago at the Sandown 500. So big things for them, hopefully. I want Brock to do well. I'm a Brock Feeney stand. Outside of Red Bull, there's also Brody Kostecki, who is well in for a title challenge this year and has yet to win a race at Bathurst. Another amazing and really interesting duo is, of course, Chaz Mustard and Lee Holdsworth. Now, this duo has actually won the Bathurst 1000 together a few years back. And whilst Chaz is the current full-time driver, Lee Holdsworth has been racing really recently in supercars. I think he only retired like last season or something. So two very experienced, very fresh drivers as well. So they're obviously a duo to watch out for. And of course, I wouldn't discount the likes of Will Brown and Jack Parkins for Erebus. Um, this is just to name a few. Obviously, look out for Cam Waters. He's there as well. Yeah, there could be quite a few people who could have a victory on Sunday. So it'll be a very interesting race, I think. No, I know, it's gonna be a very interesting race. Watch it. So I hope I've convinced you to watch the Bathurst 1000. Again, one of my all time faves. Watch it every year. Even when I was in the UK, that was difficult. That was bloody difficult, but I did it. Bathurst, give it a go. You, you will not be disappointed, even just watch the start and finish, but like, I'll have it on in the background all day. I really wanted to go this year, but the friend I was meant to go with kind of bailed on me, so it was quite sad. Anyway, um, that brings the video to a wrap. Leave a comment down below if you are going to be tuning in this year. Press the red button to subscribe, and if you like the video, then, you know, like it, and I will see you all in the next one. 
believe it is. 